follow along with this question, please refer to the unit one study guide. On page two of the study guide, under the heading Merchandise Sales Transactions, please read the question outlined in orange. This question introduces a few new accounts used in companies selling products. We introduce the inventory tab in the next question. And remember that the inventory tab is an asset account, and asset accounts go up the debit and down the credit. Inventory goes up when we purchase goods from the suppliers, and it goes down or decreases when we return goods to that supplier, or we pay for inventory and we receive an early payment system. Inventory also decreases when inventory is sold to customers. So when we make sales to customers, the inventory goes down because that inventory is at the end of the customer, and that inventory gets transferred to a new account called cost. Cost of goods sold is often abbreviated COG, and COG for cost of goods sold is an expense account. And we know that expense accounts go up with debit and down with credit. So when we debit cost of goods sold, we want that account to increase. Let's have a look at the transactions listed in the question, and we'll put them or record them in the unit journal. And as we go through those, Transactions, we'll update the two examples on the side of the paper. In the first question, on February 1st, the company sold merchandise with a cost of $2,700 and $2,400 times 2% 2 So, when we enter this transaction in the general journal, we're going to enter the date, February 1st, and the first um, thing that we do is enter the, tra the sales transaction. Um, we're going to debit accounts receivable because this is a sale with terms, so it's a sale on credit, and we're expecting to receive $3,400 in our transfer. We're going to credit our sales account. So this is also a new account that we're going to use to record the sales of merchandise. This sales account is a revenue account, so it will say up with credit and down with credit. Now, every time we make a sale of inventory, we also have to record that assessment for the inventory account. So we have to record the transfer of that inventory to customers. So we also have to debit cost and inventory. Now, the amount that we take out of the inventory account is the amount that we pay for the inventory that we sell. And it tells us in the question that the cost of the inventory is $2,000. This transaction, for this transaction, we're going to receive in the explanation that the terms of sale are 2% and down with $30. Remember, that means if we pay this or a customer pays that invoice within 10 days, they're going to get a 2% discount. Otherwise, they have to pay the full amount of $3,400 in 30 days. They also have uh, mentioned the FOB terms, which are called the obligation. Remember, that means that the ownership of these goods transfers to the new owner, the buyer, at the destination. So that means that, that the seller is going to pay for the shipping. Now, let's post that journal entry for the group. At the group of the group, I'll call 3300. Uh, February 2nd, we see that the company paid $349 for ships to merchandise sold in February 1st. And on the 2nd, we're going to set up a new account called the Delivery Account, and we're going to credit the cash. The amount that got paid was $2,400. Now, when we deliver goods to our customers and pay shipping charges, those shipping charges go to our own account called the Delivery also come out of the 
Yeah, this is different from uh, shipping charges that we pay when we first get something. We purchase a delivery and freight charges that are waiting to be inventory. Or any shipping charges that we pay for our goods coming into our place of business that we're going to sell, get added to the price. Any shipping charges that we pay for that fraud is shipping goods out to customers, we can put our bills to on February 3rd, the customer on February 1st returned half of the amount that they purchased because it was being returned. It was returned to inventory. So on the 3rd, we're going to get it a new account called the rent return to value. And they're going to credit accounts receivable. The amount that gets credited to accounts receivable is half the original amount of the transaction, so that would be $700. So, you see that I didn't create an account for exchange uh, returns. So I'm just going to create it into an account for return. And both of these accounts are revenue accounts that are debit balances. So these are contract revenue accounts. So they're almost like the regular revenue accounts. So the other half of this transaction has to be for the goods coming back into our account. So we have to record debit to our account and credit. Amount 
of the invoice, which is back within our country here, and we're going to debit the sales discount. So whenever customers take advantage of credit services and do that, they go in a sale. The next transaction on the 23rd says that we sold, we sold merchandise to a customer for cash, $1,200 plus the sale of $950. This time, we are going to get a cash instead of a cash. Sell merchandise to customers. We also have to do the reduction in the sale of the And we're going to credit the inventory. The last transaction on the same rate is the customer said to the report, we do not have a lot of money in the field, $3,000. Before we go and we have to check the fee if they can use the money. We gave them 10 days to get a 2% discount. We were not paying the 10 days to get a 2% discount. So they have to pay the net amount of the years, which is 2,000 to 2,000. And when we record this one, we are going to get it on the machine. The full amount of the years. No early payment is still the same, the same is the same, so we can see that. That's all of the transactions in this question. Please continue on again to go through the next one. Good luck. Good job.